loves, my name is Amber, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to be discussing Infested, a short story horror collection by Stephen R. King. Before we get too far into the review, I did want to mention a few trigger warnings that were relevant to the text, including spiders, spider bites, death, torture, light, gore, suicide, and assault. So if any of these things are liable to be incredibly bothersome or triggering to you, please have extreme discretion while watching the rest of this review or reading the book. But with that all being said, oof, this was certainly a collection. I cannot put into words how not great this was. And I'm gonna put this right off the bat right now. This is gonna be a mean review, so if you're not into mostly negative reviews, go ahead and skip this one because oof. Now, first of all, um, one, I mean, the design of the book is just, it's not good. It's very, very clearly self-published in, like, the worst possible way. Because don't get me wrong, I, I mean, if you are here, like, familiar with my channel, you will absolutely know that I read so many self-published and indie books, and so many of them are actually really, really good. Many of them are not, but, like, I don't have, like, a predetermined like hatred or dislike towards self-published. If you want to do it yourself, absolutely more power to you. But there are certainly some people who self-publish books because they wouldn't be able to get published otherwise. So that is what I mean in the sense of like self-published derogatory. And like literally if there's ever a book where there isn't like a spine printed on it like it doesn't have the title on the spine I feel like every book I've ever read like that with the exception of one being Bro Tree Grams by Kyle Lewis and some other dude that uh my friend Kyle Lewis wrote otherwise um <laughs> every book that I've ever seen that like doesn't have a printed title on the site has like been not great and it's just something to do with the self-publishing and the nature of it. Like, it's just one of the cheapest options to do self-publishing. I think it's really common with, like, the Amazon self-publish type stuff, which I believe this is, if I'm not mistaken. And how I actually came upon this book is because my grandmother, my Nana had actually bought it because she's just been buying a ton of books recently, but she's just been going on Amazon and picking like the best sellers, which apparently this was on one of the lists. I have to assume it was probably the best seller in like self-published horror or something like that. And she too has not been enjoying them. As you can see, obviously the author is Stephen R. King, but the cover is the only place where it says this. Like everywhere else in the book, it just says that it was written by Stephen King, and I definitely think it's probably a ploy to be mistaken as THE Stephen King, which is certainly a decision that was made. And I have to hand it to you, I guarantee you are probably selling a lot of books that way, because I have to assume people are seeing like, oh, Stephen King, like Stephen is supposed to be a really good horror author, and like obviously these are horror books. If you are wondering, Stephen R. King has written 28 different books, according to Goodreads, that I found out last night. This being the highest rated out of all of them. It actually has like over a thousand ratings on it, which is surprising for self-published books. Uh, we love that hustle, but um, yeah, the Goodreader rating is like a 3.19 out of 5 stars, and I have to disagree. <laughs> But we'll get into it. First, before I rant too much about the book, I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of an idea of what it's actually about. It is a short story collection. It does feature four different stories within this book under the titles of Infested, The Weekend, Dolls, and The Cove. According to the book blurb, it says, four new horror adventures to let you discover courage in the face of fear, to push past the worries of death and try to continue on. Could you survive while frozen in your deepest fears? Find out what happens next in the tales of Infested. So it's definitely like a concept and it definitely seems to have a little bit more of a curated kind of theme just with 
you know, fears and what you do with those fears. The way that the blurb is presented, it almost feels like horror with like a twist of self-help, which was not necessarily what the book turned out to be, but the concept of just horror mixed with self-help is so fucking funny to me. I would certainly love to see somebody try that at some point. <laughs> So within the short stories themselves, Infested features a family whose attic is infested with spiders. The weekend follows a woman with an unnamed stalker who won't quit making her phone calls. Dolls follows a woman who has an obsession with this doll formerly belonging to her late sister. And The Cove follows a woman who's on the walk on the Irish shore and comes across a menacing and mysterious figure that terrifies her. Now those are just like the bare minimum kind of tidbits to give you to explain what the stories are about without fully explaining them because I don't necessarily want to give spoilers in case anybody does happen to be interested in reading the book for yourself. I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you do, by all means, whatever you want. I don't want to totally spoil it for you. And if nothing else, it'll give you a good laugh. I, I, I just like, oh, there it... And I will put it out here, I have technically read worse, but not much. Um, oh, I, I feel so bad being so mean, but um, ooh, somebody needs to say something. <laughs> While there is like slight difference within all of the stories, my criticisms and commentary about it is pretty much active all the way across the board. I will say that probably the worst story in the collection is the actual title one of Infested. So, and that's the first um, story that's in the collection. It goes in the order in which I explained them. So Infested, The Weekend, Dolls, and The Cove. I'd say conceptually, I think The weekend was probably the most quote-unquote horrific in a believable sense without involving like supernatural elements or anything like that. I feel like The Cove was probably the most quote-unquote well-written, but that being said there were even a lot of elements of The Cove where it just was really hard to kind of follow the visuals of what exactly was going on, so you know. Conceptually, I also did really, really like dolls. I feel like could have gone in a really interesting direction. Actually vaguely reminiscent of the book Bad Girls Don't Die by Katie Allender. I do have a review for that book on my channel. It is so much better than this one. If you have any interest in checking it out, but that was definitely like vaguely reminiscent of that book. And Infested was just really really bad and very much I don't want to explain I don't want to ruin it if anybody does happen to read it and I do recommend reading that one simply for the comedy of the reveals and the nature of it um so like no context spoiler warnings rips off Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets at certain elements. I'm sure with the nature of what it's about you can probably kind of connect the dots a little bit but um oh man. <laughs> so that was probably the worst one so I definitely don't think that the collection should have been named after that particular story but I also understand that that's probably like conceptually a draw of the particular collection. And like before I go into much more specific criticism, I do at the very least want to say that like conceptually the stories were not bad. Like the concepts were actually good and I think if the author grew a little bit like they could be written, rewritten and be fairly decent. Like the overall concept of the short story collection was that there are these four different stories that are playing upon different fears. And while like yes they are like incredibly basic and like very stereotypical and some of the most common fears, 
I think that that's also a good way to kind of affect the most the most amount of people. So as cheesy as I do find it to be, I think conceptually like that is a good marketing plot at the very least. And I definitely think that if the author grows a little bit, they could have developed and been a lot better. So like conceptually, I see they, where they were going with it. But if we're being honest, it... <sighs> One just desperately needed an editor and a couple of beta readers. Like, we just had a ton of grammatical errors in a way that it was just technically bad on an English level. You know, just very much an amateur author. You could tell that this is not a professional. And based on the vibe of the book, it very much feels like it was probably written by someone a bit older. And I don't know why I feel like this. Like, I can't give you a specific example of why I think this, but I do think that Stephen R. King is a pseudonym. I think it was written by a woman. And I don't have any specific reasoning for why I think that, other than the fact that the majority of the stories were from the perspective of women, and it felt like it didn't feel like men writing women derogatory. It felt like women writing women stereotyped. Yeah, no, I don't know. I just think it was written by a woman. Not that that, like, affects the review in any way. I just think it's funny that, like, you're gonna... If that is the case, and I have no idea, I could be entirely wrong, but if that is the case, like, you're choosing your pseudonym to try and, like, jump on the coattails of Stephen King, who's, like, an actual, like, well-known, famous horror writer. But okay... Again, from a marketing standpoint, I see why you're doing it. I just feel like I would have respected it a little bit more had this person just, like, been themselves. And again, you know what? Like, maybe this person's actual name is Stephen King. However, considering the notoriety of the actual Stephen King, you should have marketed it a little bit differently, but I digress. On top of the grammatical and just technical errors throughout the book, the characters felt very flat and inauthentic. They just were very one-dimensional, like there was not much depth to them, at least in the way that they came across. Like you could definitely see that they tried to add depth to them. They tried to make the characters relatable and like have them be able to like root for. It just did not come across. Like, I could see what they were trying to do, and it just fell short and did not work out the way I imagine it was intended to. Like, it'd be one thing if, like, it was technically written poorly, but then the characters were, like, really, really cool. Then it would definitely, like, excuse certain things, but that wasn't the case. So all around, the book was just not a particularly strong contender for much of anything. Which really, really sucks because, like I said, conceptually, it really wasn't bad. Like, the concepts are there. The idea is great. You just need to spend longer developing those. Like, I think that each one, if they, like, the author had just expanded on them, they could have made their own novellas instead of being put together as a short story collection. I think because they were short stories, it did them a bit of a disservice because you kind of were just rushed through them and you didn't get the development that you would want or need to really feel the horrific effects of what is being described. And in doing so, like, again, conceptually, the horror aspects are there. Like, all of these concepts are very, very horrific. But in execution, it felt more comedic than scary. Like I said, if it had had an editor to just catch the technical aspects that weren't correct, and a few beta readers to give some of this advice that I'm giving, where it's just like, we just need it to be a little bit more dimensional, a little bit more developed, a little bit longer, I think that the author has the potential to be decent. But as of this particular collection, is not. Oh, I'm such a bitch. But 
you know, if I'm not going to be honest, who else will? Especially because a lot of the reviews look like they were like raves and I'm like, why though? Like I have to wonder how many of the reviews were paid and or like gifted. Like I said, conceptually it's there and if you're really that interested in reading it, like it's very very short. I think I finished the entire thing in like two hours. Like it's a really really quick read and I would read it again simply because that's a lot. If somebody wanted me to, I would read it again because it is so short and quick to get through. But if I'm being entirely honest, I do think I'm going to pass this copy along because I have no interest in reading it again. Like, with somebody who gets sent as many PR and review requests as I do, a lot of them tend to be not so great, especially because a lot of these are first-time authors and, you know, more self-published type things or ones that just needed a little bit more editing, etc. But uh, sometimes it's nice to get a book that's just really, really bad to give you a little bit of more perspective on what your actual gauge of what bad means. So if nothing else I got that from this. But anyways, thank you guys so so much for watching. I had a blast hanging out with y'all. Peace.